Hello and welcome to day nine of our sixth grade math review. We've got just a few days left and tonight's work is going to be fairly easy. We are looking at uh, the perimeter of the floor in yards. This is number 38 on the 2017 math star and this is actually very very simple here. We're just trying to convert yards and feet. So really all we need to know is that three feet equals one yard. And that's something that we've been working with all the way back since third grade. It's on the mathematics chart. So when you've got a perimeter, let's say it's a rectangle here, and we're just going to say P equals 6,615 feet. How does that translate into yards? Well, when you are going in from a smaller to a larger, which is what we're doing here, because our conversion here is going to go from feet and it's going to go into a larger uh, unit of yards. There's three feet into one yard. So when you're going from smaller into larger, you need to remember that we're dividing because we're going to take every three feet of these, we're going to take that and make it into a yard. So we're going to carve out sets of three out of 6,615. So really we're just going to divide. 6,615, we're just going to divide it by three. So that's going to be six. And that's also going to be two right there. So that's six. It doesn't go into one. So we're going to make it into 15. And there we go, 2,205. So 2,205, that is going to equal 6,615 feet. If you didn't know what to do, if you knew that three was involved somehow, well, you could easily just multiply the 6,615 by three and guess what you would get? You'd get this right here. If you got really crazy, I'm not sure how you would get uh, the 7,800. Uh, I'm not sure we'd have to divide to get by that and I'm not sure where this comes from. Now your answer is going to be F. Just remember when you're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, you're dividing because you're taking the smaller chunks and putting them into the larger units. If you were to go from large to small, that's when you would multiply. So that's what you've got to remember is which direction you're going. Large to small is going to multiply, small to large is going to be divide. So that's uh, pretty simple for the first one this evening. And the second one is also fairly simple. All you have to know is how many angles are in a triangle. Now this is not on the uh, mathematics chart and it's not going to be anything that you can ask a teacher if you do not know um, how many angles are in, uh, how many degrees are in the sum of the angles in a triangle then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. If you get stuck then you can't remember the exact number. Here's a simple way to remember how many degrees are in the uh, sum of the angles of a triangle. Take a square. You know a square has four square corners. Each square corner is a right angle worth 90 degrees. So if you don't know anything you can always start with a square. Rectangle as well. So a square is going to equal 360 degrees because that is 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90. Uh, 360 degrees is also the amount of degrees in a circle. I give you to go right here and go all the way around. That is 360. And if you can't remember that, just think about your skateboarding or snowboarding video games. When you make one complete turn around, that is a 360. That means you go all the way around. So a square is 360. And the reason that's going to help us is because we know that a triangle is half a square. So if the whole thing is going to be 360, that means we're going to have to split 360 in half. And that's how we know that every single triangle, whether you make a square like this, if you make a, a rectangle like this, it's going to be 180, 180. You could even start with a parallelogram if you wanted to. Cut that into two triangles. Guess what you're going to get? 180, 180. Same if you wanted to make a trapezoid. It'd be kind of a strange 
uh, looking trapezoid. There we go. But it's going to be 180, 180. So once you know that every triangle has a sum of 180 degrees, then this becomes really, really simple. Triangle X, Y, Z. So I'm going to draw that right here. So we're going to say X, Y, Z. With the measure of angle Y, X, Z. So when you have the three letters right there, it's that center angle, that center letter, that's going to be your vertex. So Y, X, Z. So when I'm going from Y to X to Z, it's this X I'm looking at. That's going to be 50. So we're going to call this 50 degrees. And the measure of angle X, Y, Z, so I'm looking at this Y as my vertex, is 75. Now, I didn't draw this correctly. This looks like a 90 degree angle, but it really doesn't matter what it looks like because now we're looking for X, Z, Y. I'm looking for this. Well, I know that 75 plus 50 is going to give me 125. I know that the entire sum of everything is going to be 180. So if I take that 180, take away 125, you are going to have your answer of 55 degrees. So my angle right here is going to be 55 degrees because if I added up 55 and 50 and 75, I would get my 180. This was a free response, so you'd have to just bubble in 55 into um, the gridable response if this was on a star test. And finally, let's take a look at our last one for this evening. Super simple. Once again, it's based on a vocabulary term, the origin. It says, which ordered pair describes a point that is located for you to left to the origin? Well, where's the origin? I don't see anything labeled origin here. This is a vocabulary word that you're going to have to know. The origin is going to be in the center of your coordinate plane. It has the coordinates of 0, 0. Once you've got that, then everything else is pretty simple. But that is not going to be labeled for you, so you need to know that. So if you're looking at your coordinate plane, you always start on the top right where everything's positive. That's quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Think of it, it's making the letter C. Now, once we know where our origin is, I'm going to just make it a green dot right here. Four units to the left, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's my four units to the left, and two units below the x-axis that is labeled. So below is going to be down here. So it's going to be this position right here, so it's going to be, they gave you the coordinates, negative 4, and negative two. The only trick they would say here is they said four units to the left, you would have to know that that is negative four. And two units below, you'd have to know that is negative two. But besides that, fairly simple question. The answer is G. So that's it for tonight. Make